So let, let me introduce myself again for people who came. I'm heading the engineering team uh, in WSO2. Uh, people call me Shankar. This is a very lengthy name, etc. So what we wanted to do here was, um, I mean, the ideas are ideas do have values, right? And but the execution takes that idea into the real success, flawless success. And software engineering, if you have a proper software engineering processes that helps you in executing this on a flawless manner, etc. So that's what we wanted to cover in this particular talk. Uh, we thought we'll explain what we do in WSO2 in the software engineering process. And obviously, we wanted to hear your thoughts about our software engineering process, what you think, and want to learn from you as well, but what also uh, what you can take from this particular talk as well. And also a brief description about Corio and how the design of Corio has been influenced by the, the processes we follow in WSO2. That's the gist of this particular talk. So first, start with how do you do software engineering in WSO2, right? The first step starts with the requirements. So we um, collect all the requirements from customers, partners, uh, our market research, or some brainstorming sessions, etc. And uh, we often, every time people come up with some idea, we record them. That is the first step. So we use uh, GitHub uh, um, issues in order to manage all our requirements. Uh, so we record them. The issues or the request might come from customers, or it might come from some random developers within the organization. Whoever comes up with an idea, they go and create an issue. And we keep a track of all the issues uh, in the system. And that is the first requirement, uh, first step. Then we uh, prioritize. We have something called a product council. Uh, we have multiple people get together, go through the process, go, go through what are the uh, features available or feature requests available, then prioritize it. And uh, once the issues got prioritized, or once the feature got prioritized, uh, we start with the design phase. So in most cases, I mean, in, inside WSO2, we use open source culture. We came from an open source background, right? And all our products are open source. So even for any other discussions within WSO2, we use similar processes. So often the communications on the design discussions are on the mailing list or in the GitHub issues itself, or GitHub discussion in some cases, um, like Ballerina, etc. They use GitHub discussions. But one or the other, we encourage participation from multiple people in order to design the system. So it, possibly it might be designed by one person or one particular team, but it gives a chance for all others to view the designs and get the feedback from various places. So primarily we use Figma as a designing tool or Google Docs or several other diagramming tools, etc. Again, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Then once the design is available, we do several reviews, like architecture review, security review, UX review, and API design review, et cetera, in order to identify what are the problems. So it's kind of an iterative process. We go through the design phase and then start prioritizing or defining the minimum viable product or the milestone plans, and then start implementing. So the development goes through multiple stages. Uh, so the coding, again, uh, if you would have been in the IOMAS talk, he talked about the security processes. So we kind of integrated security processes from the very early stages, from the design uh, review itself, the security processes will get started. But then uh, during the coding as well, uh, there are secure engineering guidelines people had to follow and uh, figure out what are the best way to write code. And then uh, we use OWASP dependency checks, etc. Because when you take dependencies, there are multiple processes you have to go through, uh, whether the dependency is uh, active projects, whether it has vulnerability, etc. So because of, based on all that processes, we figure out what are the dependencies we want to take. 
Then in the process, this is going through a pipeline. Uh, so we follow, uh, so the developers, they had to run the security tools, scanning tools, et cetera, on their ID itself, like find bugs, check styles, security bugs, and so on and so on. They go through some code reviews with the team, and that is again an iterative process. And once the feature is at some uh, proper level, they create a pull request. Right, and uh, they send the pull request. In WSO2, we follow something called review, then commit. So generally, we don't push the code directly into the repository. Uh, we create the pull request, and there are some automations around the pull request as well. So there will be uh, some build happens. If there are unit tests, et cetera, that will get executed as part of that. We uh, do code cow, which is a GitHub plugin which can analyze the uh, code coverage and so on. And there is a, another developer who has commit access, how to go through the pull request, and then approve. And only after that approval happened, it will get merged into the code base. So it's a review, then commit uh, process we follow. Again, development is, again, uh, all the discussions on the mailing list, as I explained previously. Uh, so we have a specific process on uh, bringing third-party dependencies. Uh, problem is um, people can come up with several third-party dependencies. Uh, we need to go through several process. One is whether the license is compatible with Apache 2 license. Like, for example, if it's a GPL license, et cetera, then we don't allow that particular dependencies. Whether the third-party dependency is an active developed project and who the owners of the project, et cetera, that's, again, we review before approving a, a dependency. Uh, third one is uh, we go through what are the vulnerabilities reported against that uh, dependencies, and we analyze it. And if the uh, and fourth one is whether we already have an existing dependency which is having similar functionality. In that case, we tend to reuse existing dependencies rather than bringing a new dependency. Or well, one or the other, we go through a process and approve uh, dependencies. Then we use uh, as development process we use uh, feature branches. So each of these particular feature is uh, developed on a particular branch, and at some stage it is ready, then it, the pull request will be sent against the main branch, and then somebody will uh, review it and merge it. Um, we tend to ask people to do the automated testing, either unit test, integration test, or scenario test, et cetera. Again, that is part of the development process. Uh, they had to provide these automation tests. Uh, we very, I mean, we do some manual testing as well, but uh, most of them are like automated tests. And uh, documentations and samples, again, as part of finishing off the pull request, uh, people have to send the documentations, uh, people have to send the samples, etc., and then only we consider the feature as a done state. Uh, at that point, it will get merged. And then we have configured depend about in GitHub, which automatically goes and uh, analyzes what are the dependencies and what are the latest version of the dependencies, then it automatically creates some pull request and send the pull request for the uh, repositories. Then come the testing stage. As I mentioned, like we primarily depending on the automation test. So unit test, again, based on the language they are using, uh, they can use whatever the unit test native to that particular language. Integration test, uh, we generally, uh, like scenario test, we use Cypress. There are some test ng test cases as well for backend testing and so on. So people can use these frameworks to build the integration testing. Uh, but our software products, if you take API Manager, or Identity Server, etc., that has to be tested in multiple operating system, multiple databases, multiple message queues, uh, all uh, multiple JDKs, all that combination. So we have a system, in-house build system called Test Grid, which kind of uh, testing in multiple dimensions. Uh, so, for example, in one dimension might be 
some combination of infrastructure, and then uh, even if you take API Manager, for example, you can run it on a single node, two node, or fully distributed deployment. So every database and operating system combination makes sense for all of these combinations. So that is a different dimension. Then per each of these combinations, there can be several scenarios you can test against. So that is going to be the third dimension. So we use a system called TestGrid in order to do all these combinations uh, or test in all these combinations. So that is the testing phase. Then the release phase, uh, we have two kinds of releases. One is the software release. The other one is cloud release. So like API Manager, et cetera, will fall under software release. Um, uh, Corio and Asgardio will fall under cloud release. So, so cloud releases, we generally release every day, uh, or at least like a couple of times every week. So it's a very frequent releases. Uh, in, uh, so that is shown on the bottom part of the screen. Uh, whenever the feature is available, it will be deployed to the development environment. We run the automated test in the development environments, uh, move. Uh, when the tests are all succeeding, move to the staging or test environment, run further tests, and then eventually it goes to, into the production environment. It's kind of fully automated, um, and we do uh, releases, like two releases per day, or at least like a couple of releases every week. In the case of software, we do um, milestone releases. Every two weeks, we release milestone. So again, uh, the, whatever the features released into the um, merged into the main branch will get released into the milestone. Uh, so we consider, I mean, that particular milestone uh, weekly releases or milestone releases will happen uh, frequently. And at some stage, uh, when we decide all the features are done, we will release an alpha stage release. After that, uh, we go through like two weeks time period where we had to fi uh, fix all the L1, L2 issues, re uh, do a beta release, and then do multiple release candidates. And then we do a voting process where multiple people uh, can test it in the open source community as well. Multiple people can test it and then give their voting to say whether to release or not. In any of these cases, if anything failed, it goes to the previous stages. And eventually, if everything is succeeded, uh, we will do a general available software release, GA release. So the security is embedded in every process, every stages of the process. Um, so these are some of the tools. I mean, IOMA went through several analyses, but these are some of the tools we are using. Uh, in the case of static analysis, we use Veracode. Uh, these are all commercial tools, right? In the case of dynamic analysis, Coalis, Invicti, Burp Suit, et cetera. For the third-party dependency analysis, we use FOSA primarily, but for JFrog X-ray, for some scanner, sorry, um, the uh, images scanning, Trivi for uh, Docker image scanning, and so on. So again, uh, the, sec the security process starts in the very early stages. It goes through every stage. And then uh, during the final product release cycle as well, there is a comprehensive testing happens at the uh, release time. Then when the, re when the software got released and when customers are using, we go into a, a cycle called maintenance cycle, where if you are using a product, if you come up with a bug or some other problems, then we fix, um, issue, we fix them and issue patches. So we use some system called update system uh, in WS3. So you would have used the U2 system, et cetera. So we fix on a particular version. If an issue is identified on a particular version, we also track back what are the previous versions of uh, software where the same issue occurred. So we backport, and also we frontport the issue or fix to the all the way to the main branch. Uh, that's the process. For, and for each of these particular versions, we proactively issue patches for the customers so that when they run the U2 tool, update tool, the patches will be pulled out and then will be deployed there. So that is our maintenance cycle uh, process. 
And then, uh, because of we are using several third-party dependencies, the, the security scanning and the vulnerability assessment has to happen on a continuous basis. Because even though by the time the release happened, there wasn't any issue or uh, vulnerability identified in one of these dependencies. But it could have been identified later on. So because of that, uh, we keep on analyzing um, the, the third-party dependencies, etc., uh, using FOSA and JFROG, and find any of the issues, and then fix it and issue patches as part of the patching process. So that happens on a continuous basis, right, for all the release products. And uh, so for the cloud and other systems, uh, we also automate all our DevOps processes. Uh, so we use Terraform as the infrastructure support layer. And uh, everything is on GitHub repositories. So we, process, we follow the uh, GitHub's process. And the monitoring is automated using Azure and Custos query, uh, which is a query to analyze the Azure monitors, et cetera. And the application layer, we use Site24 by 7 uh, to monitor the applications layer, and then uh, use PagerDuty for L1 uh, issues, email or chat notification for non-critical uh, failures, and so on. Sorry, the, the production system versus non-production systems. So this is, a, again, an automated process. In most cases, uh, it will identify the issues and send you send the notification to the people. Then uh, people will get involved in analyzing the pro problems. Uh, either if it can be an uh, infrastructure level problem, in that case, they will fix it. If it's a product level issue, it will come back to the product team uh, through the normal maintenance cycle. Um, again, uh, the DevOps process as well, there are several security tools involved. Uh, because even though uh, even this particular Terraform, et cetera, we uh, test or we analyze using TFSEC or Chekhov, et cetera, there are several tools involved in um, uh, DevOps, uh, DevOps cycle as well. Okay, so what key takeaway I think uh, which will be like abstracting now. Now, this is a concrete process we follow in WSO2, when we abstract it out, what are the learning we can have for other businesses. First thing is record all requirements. This has tremendously helped us because we record every single requirement. So every time when we go back and check or when there is a requirement coming from customers, we go back and discover that, okay, somebody have already thought about that problem and we would have recorded it. It helped us to connect the dots, etc. So first uh, takeaway is we should record all the requirements as much as possible. Second, apply the inner source. Uh, there is something called inner source, which is applying the open source process and methodology in a closed source environment. So uh, the, the, the idea was more eyes you have in your design process and development process, more solid the software is going to be. So inner source helps you to bring more eyes into the process so that uh, you can participate or get more involvement from multiple people. Then obviously you need to support parallel versions. Um, even though you release products, you might have to maintain the previous versions, even in the cloud system because of the backward compatibility and so on, possibly you might have to support uh, multiple versions of uh, a particular service. Um, so again, uh, plan for it and plan for a process of identifying bugs and fixing them. It will come as a burden as well at some point because when you support like four or five versions, if a bug is identified on a very old versions, it might have affected all the way to the newer versions. So it's a painful process, but then again, when you have a automated process available, at least it takes away majority of the pain uh, from your developers, help them to manage it. Then uh, follow the GitHub's process. Um, that is, uh, at least if there is something goes wrong, you can identify what are the changes happened from the last stable stages. 
So GitOps process will help you to analyze all of that. Then testing, deployment, monitoring, automate as much as possible. Uh, automation is the only way you will get uh, repeatable deployments and so on. So that is the other uh, process. Then security at every level and continuous security process. So security become more and more critical items in the cloud systems, right? There are lots of security attacks and so on. So security should be at every level. So let's briefly talk about Corio and how Corio's some of the features have been influenced by these kind of thoughts. Um, so Mifan also talk about what is Corio. So basically, Corio is our internal developer platform, uh, which lets you to build applications. So it lets the developers to build applications without worrying about what the underlying platform or etc. So basically, it takes away all the burden from the developers, automate all the pipelines to the level so that developers can just write code and it appears in the production. All other uh, messy kind of integrations, et cetera, is handled for you by the platform. So it handles all the builds, uh, all the deployments, all the testing, et cetera, and then can deploy it into multiple environments uh, uh, or multiple uh, uh, grouping of cells, et cetera, and then can manage all the automatic observability, uh, analytics, and so on. So there are some abstractions available in the case of Corio. Let's you to go into the details of how well you want to slice and dice your problem. Uh, there is an abstraction called organizations. The, uh, underneath, you can have multiple projects. Underneath, you can have multiple components. So basically, you define or do you design or your microservices architecture uh, into a combination of all of these abstractions and then deploy it into multiple environments and so on. So uh, next talk, uh, the next speaker, Chanuka, will talk more about how we are using Corio internally, and you will, um, you will keep on hearing many of these particular terms. OK, so we talk about the key takeaways and uh, just briefly talk about how Corio helps in that particular takeaways. So the requirement part, we don't have anything in Corio. Uh, we expect people to keep the requirements outside Corio, et cetera, coming from um, the issue tracking systems or some other systems. But uh, for, from an inner source point of view, um, so Corio keep track of all the source code repositories attached to the projects or at the component level, so that any random developers who are coming into Corio and looking at what the deployments and et cetera, they can identify where the source code is, so that they can go and participate, or, or they know exactly who owns the source code, which team owns the project, and can go and collaborate with the project. So it brings all these inner source concepts into the picture. Then parallel versions, we have a feature called deployment tracks. It allows you to uh, easily create versions um, and manage all the deployments, et cetera, on parallel versions. So it allows you to manage multiple parallel versions together. Then uh, GitHub side, we have several environments, configuration management, so that uh, when the, the applications goes from environment to environment, it extract out all the configurations out. And if you modify some configuration, again, it keeps track of what other modification happens and so on. From an automated testing point of view, uh, there are some specialized component called test components, uh, which helps you to create um, integration test in your project so that uh, when, you, when you have multiple components in a project and you have a test component as well, uh, you can do all the automated testing against those projects. And CICD, observability, inside all of these are integrated so that automated uh, monitoring and deployment can be managed. Then security at every level. Uh, at the moment, we have Trivi scans. Uh, so when you build an application, the container will be 
scan, and Trivi scan help you to do, identify any of the vulnerabilities. And also, there are API gateways and cell architecture. Uh, uh, Chanaka will talk more about the cell architecture and so on, which helps you to uh, kind of isolate your functionalities and provide security at various levels. Right? Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover.